Ball is with Liverpool on this near side, the right-hand side, and Beardsley, who was probably the best performer in the first half, has got the ball, and he's floated it over to the far side of the field to John Barnes, and Barnes is inside the area, taking on Snowden, cuts the ball back, and Ian Rush scores for Liverpool! Ian Rush scores, once again, against Everton in this big occasion, Remember those two goals at Wembley back in May? That won the FA Cup for Liverpool. It also broke Dixie Dean's record. Ian Rush has now scored 22 goals in Merseyside derbies. And Liverpool have come back from behind here. Beardsley and Barnes and Rush with the killer finish. It's Everton 1, Liverpool 2. Marvellous goal, really. And the two players there I was talking about in the first half. Beardsley and Barnes were the two people who turned up to... It's a lovely crossfield ball from Barnes, but then Barnes immediately attacked Snowden with the ball. He didn't sort of dally, he just went straight at him, took the play straight to him to the byline, and when he put it across really well, and I know it's only one he touching over the line, but rushed it well to put it away. It was a super goal, that. Super goal. Rush to Beardsley, shoots it to the left! back with the aid of a defender and Beardsley teased the ball right footed a Ryan Spink into the right hand corner it's Liverpool 1 Aston Villa 1 Lustry Stamford Bridge Chelsea 6th in Division 1 Liverpool 2nd behind Arsenal at the moment Barry Venison halfway inside his own half right footed plays it forward Rush lays it off immediately pushed forward McMahon clear of the defence again one on one with Besant it's there into the far corner Beautifully done, 4-1 to Liverpool, and an almost identical goal, Steve McMahon, the goal scorer this time, but yet again that uh, Chelsea defence left square, McMahon all on his own, just at an angle with Besant, chipped it over him, into the far corner, it's Chelsea 1, Liverpool 4. There's a sort of stunned silence, run because it is exactly the same format every time. On that occasion, it was Steve McMahon running from deep. In the meantime, high ball from Graham Roberts. Kenneth Moncal has stayed up there following the corner. Now he'll have to get back, and Liverpool could counter here. McMahon plays the ball into the Chelsea half. The rush is on, literally, by Rush. He's inside the area. He's got Beardsley with him, and Houghton. Oh, and a great goal by Ray Houghton. And what a counter-attack that was. No! George Courtney's going to disallow it. George Courtney has disallowed a possible fifth goal from Ray Houghton. Trevor Brooking. Well, it's a great move, and uh, unfortunately for Ray Houghton, who hit one with his left foot, which he doesn't often do, uh, when he like a rocket. Peter Beardsley just straight a yard offside. Uh, the argument would be whether he was interfering with play, but it's probably, probably elementary anyway. Ablett with a cross, and Rush with a goal for Liverpool. And that is goal number five. And Ian Rush scores his second and Chelsea have been torn apart. Gary Ablett races down the left, pinpoints the cross, Ian Rush buries the ball in the back of the net with his head, and it's Chelsea 1, Liverpool 5. That is uh, amazing, really. On that occasion, again, Liverpool, six or seven passes in their own half, and then Gary Ablett making a superb run, a super ball, got it towards the touchline, whipped it across, and Ian Rush again unmarked. Nickel for Liverpool inside the penalty and shoots. Besson can only deflect it. It's into the goal. Nickel's eighth of the season, and that cements the victory. Liverpool three, Chelsea nil. And that was a marvellous through ball from Ian Rush. I thought again for Nickel, as we were saying earlier on, there's so many players able to break through from Liverpool. You, you mark Rush in uh, Rosenthal, but there's other people there. Nickel made the run. He must have run something like 40 yards. Lovely through ball and a lovely goal. Here, Liverpool lead Chelsea by 3-0. They've got uh, the attack moving now with Barnes, just outside the penalty area. He's beaten two, lays it off to Rosenthal, left-hand side. Gets the cross, a deep rush must score, he has! Beautiful cross from Ronnie Rosenthal. And Ian Rush 
all on his own, heads past Besant, his 24th goal of the season, Liverpool 4, Chelsea 0. A lovely move by Liverpool, started by John Barnes, he beat a couple of players, then he flicked the ball out to Rosenthal, Rosenthal looked up, saw Rush at the far post, whipped in a lovely, lovely cross, Rush didn't even have to move, just stood there and knocked it into the empty net, marvellous goal for Liverpool. So Liverpool with a penalty kick that could decide the championship, Barnes hits it into the net, to the left of Seaman as the keeper dived to the right, John Barnes, sixth successful penalty of the season, and that could mean that the championship goes to Anfield for the 18th time, another record. Liverpool 2, Queen's Park Rangers 1. I'm sure that Liverpool know they are precisely one minute away from their 18th league championship. They've got possession inside the Rangers half. Houghton looking to play the 1-2 with Rush, and you can hear the roar from the cop. Champions, champions, but the way this afternoon's football has gone, it's not over yet. It's close to being over, though. But as it is now, Liverpool feel, no doubt, it's there. Well, only once in 17 years have Liverpool not regained the title lost the previous season. That was 15 years ago when Derby County succeeded Leeds as champions. Arsenal took the title last year. Liverpool thinking it's theirs by right almost. But they're so close now to regaining it. Time is up on my watch. Liverpool's players must know the significance now of a win against Queen Park Rangers. Robbie Hart, the referee, looking at his watch, nodding to Steve McMahon, who's saying, blow your whistle. Robillard taking no chances, throws the ball out to Venison, takes the return ball. We're watching the Liverpool bench, waiting to see them erupt as Grobelar hits it long into the Rangers half, headed away by Law. It's got a bounce out of play on the far side. The whistles come up from the fans. They want full-time at Anfield. Villa 3, Norwich 3. A win will take the championship into Tenny, Kenny Dalglish's hands. Grobelar, edge of his area. Clears, right-footed. The referee blows his whistle. Liverpool have won by two goals to one. They've gotten the business. Three points, that's what they needed here this afternoon. They've got them courtesy of a 2-1 victory. And we wait to see if Villa have dropped two precious points at Villa Park. Jimmy. Yes, I think on the first half, Rangers were the better side. In the second half, though, Liverpool came back very well. The crucial moment for me in this game was Rush's goal just before half-time. And then, of course, they put all the pressure on in the second half. Rangers fell away a bit near the end. The Rangers have played well, but who can dispute? Liverpool. Well, there are scenes of delight all around Anfield at this moment. The cop alive with passion and emotion. Everyone's standing on their feet, but they still wait for the news from Villa Park to see if Villa have drawn with Norwich. And certainly Liverpool's players seem to be acclaiming their 18th league championship. Dalglish and Hansen hugging each other. Now it's with Barnes, the footballer of the year. Kenny Dalglish out onto the pitch applauding each of his players and shaking their hands. What a record he's had. Four league championships with Celtic up in Scotland. Then he comes south. He wins five league titles as a player with Liverpool. Three as a manager. Is this to be his fourth? Certainly Liverpool appear to look as if it's all over. We're still waiting for a confirmation from Villa Park as to whether it's 3-3 and that would declare Liverpool champions. 30 trophies in the last two decades and seconds away surely now from their 31st Liverpool 2 Queen's Park Rangers 1 the scenes of jubilation at the end only to be expected at Anfield but here they've done it all and they've seen it all before and no one more than the man who's standing with me now Kenny Dalglish the manager Kenny there was some drama last season now it may not have matched it this season but the results better for you obviously it's always better to be champions and it on us up isn't it uh, but they've deserved it they've been uh, the best all, all season and now they've got the reward for it what were your thoughts as the season went on because you know Villa kept with you for so long well we came down about Villa we played them twice and we, we drew both games we can only concern ourselves with ourselves get on with the games that were coming up for us and take as much as we poss possibly could from them and that's what we've done that's why we're champions as always it was in your own hands it was up to you to win the points to win the championship but did you at all pay any attention to what was going on at Villa today? Oh, we knew it was, it was three each uh, at time up there. But 
we didn't know that it was two, two minutes to go or something after we'd finished. But the important thing was that we have won it with two games in hand. And if we were only going to be champions today, uh, we had a chance to do it at Derby and also Coventry. And that's important. I mean, they, they've been out and they played and they might not have started as well as what they've played all season. But certainly after the first half hour, I don't think there was any doubt about it that we were by far a superior team. I tell you, I don't know if you're aware of it, but you're, the players were actually doing the lap of honour while commentary was still going on at Villa. There must have been about five or six minutes injury time there. Well, I'm sure I just said that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> it's your confidence, isn't it? You're always I just said that. Again. Tell me, I know you, I didn't, you don't like the single out players. I'm sure you won't do so again, but you've got this skipper in Alan Hansen who pushed John Barnes close to winning Footballer of the Year. What's his eighth league championship at Anfield over three decades? Ah, and he's still got a couple of years to go, yeah. Obviously, he's been a magnificent servant to the club, um, and it's fitting that somebody like him will be lifting his trophy on Tuesday night. Whether he's fit to play or not remains to be seen, but he'll be going out to lift it anyway. And if he's pushed John Barnes as close as that, he must have had one hell of a season, because John Barnes hasn't done badly. But at the end of the day, somebody's got to win it with one vote or lose it with one vote. There's never going to be a tie, is it? And another tribute, I suppose, appropriate for your squad strength because there have been so many injuries that you've carried this season and carried them well because of the players that you've been able to bring in. Injuries are part and parcel of football. Uh, it's important how you go over them. And obviously that's the importance of having a quality squad and that's what we've always had here. And that's what we'll continue to have. But the squad that we've got will take a good, a good player to improve it. And uh, if we can improve it, we'll be looking to do so. Get another Kenny Dalgleish for us. Thanks very much, Kenny. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, the captain's here with me, just outside an ecstatic dressing room. Um, Alan, what's that? The eighth league championship medal? Yeah, it's number eight. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's great because it's, it's happening now. It's obviously it's the best one I've won because, like I say, it's happening now and I'm going to have a good night tonight anyway. Um, we've struggled on throughout the season. I mean, people have been knocking the team left, right and centre, but we've had one league defeat since November and that speaks for itself. Um, we've won the, the championship with two games to go and obviously we're over the moon. I suppose it is a fair comment to say that it, it was a non-vintage season but Liverpool emphatically better than the rest. That's all that counts. Yeah, even as far back as you know the, the turn of the year I thought there was only one team that was going to run away with it. You know, if we, if we thought if we suddenly hit peak form and had a good run I thought we'd win it easily. But it didn't, possibly didn't work out like that. I mean, we, we played a lot of games where um, we were scoring a few and letting in a few. There's a couple of games that were two nothing up, and, and we eventually drew two each. And Aston Villa were ha hanging on in there. They they played well throughout the season, but I think in the end their experience told. What was it like for you towards the end? Because you'd come off injured, you were sitting on the bench. D did you know what was going on? I knew what the score was at Villa Park, and uh, obviously they were winning one nil, and they went to. Um, one each and then 3-1 for Villa and I thought well it's, it's going to be down to Tuesday night um, and then suddenly five minutes to go Norwich score and then the guy next to me says they've done it again and, and the crowd just erupted and, and the next thing we knew we won the league and it's one hell of a feeling I know if, if you knew what the secret was you'd bottle it and sell it but, but what is it about this club that enables them to maintain this tremendous run of success? Well, that's 31 it, trophies in the last 20 years. Well, at the end of the day, it's all about players. I mean, you've got to have the backroom staff and you've got to have the manager who knows what players, uh, knows the players to buy. But at the end of the day, the old saying is, once they cross the white line, then nobody can help them. And at the end of the day, I think we, everybody knows we've got the best players. Um, but having said that, the manager's favourite um, saying is effort, attitude and commitment. And I think if Liverpool players show effort, attitude and commitment, then there's nobody in this country that will beat us. But obviously, um, when you've won things left, right and centre, you, you tend to get a bit relaxed. And um, Especially, there's been times this season where we've been so much on top. I think that um, the game against Crystal Palace, for example, is one of the three times this season that that I've said to myself after 20 minutes there's no way this team will score in a million years and the th on the three occasions we've lost 4-3-2 um, it was a bad day defensively against Crystal Palace but our defensive had its knockers but currently we're sitting second in goals against and we've scored all we're an attacking team and at the end of the day the, the thing that you've got to win is a championship and we've won it hopefully we'll be back in Europe next season and there is no reason why this club can't go on for another 20 years Another four years for you, Alan Hansen. At 38, you might win a dozen well, league uh, winners. I'm going for a record now. I've won eight and nearly he's won eight. So 
next, my ambition at the minute is to play nine league games next season, which makes me qualify for another championship medal. You're right, just make it, Alan. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks for Alan Hansen, captain of Champions Liverpool.